If I gave you a million dollars, no strings attached, would you take it? Would you take it? But what if I told you you can have a million dollars, but you die tomorrow? Would you still take it? I just want to talk to you. And I don't care how many people are, you're going to get it, all right? I came to provide impact. Like Steve Jobs said, put a dip in the universe. And so I want to have impact so you can get your transformation. Everybody say transformation, because that's what we're here for. First thing I want to know, if you really ready for this, if you're ready, if you're ready for your million dollar payday, I need you to tap yourself on the chest. I need you to yell it out loud so everybody in the DMV know it's you. Tap yourself and say me. Okay, now y'all starting to get ready. Well, let me ask you something. Why is that important? Like, I get it, but why is it important to you? Money is really important. I mean, really important. Like, money's right up there with oxygen, but it's not everything. But without it, we choke. Have you ever heard the phrase, time is money? Well, let me ask you this. So, if I gave you a million dollars, no strings attached, would you take it? Would you take it? But what if I told you you can have a million dollars, but you die tomorrow? Would you still take it? No, no. I, I, so time is not money. So why is it that you continue to exchange your time for money? Why do you continue to exchange your time for a W-2? The reality is this. What if I could show you how you can do big deals, get the big payday by leveraging apartments and hotels to take care of your why, to stop exchanging your time for a W-2? Would you like that? Yes or yes? Today, I'm going to share with you all these different things, my story on how we did these different things. There are 332 million people in the U.S. population and only 24 million are millionaires. That's 8 percent. Out of the total population, only 2 percent is the Jewish population. But yet the Jewish population dominates the top 30 percent of the Forbes list every year. And then on top of that, typically in the top 10, typically three to five Jewish people in the top 10. Now, what are they doing? They got different beliefs. See, they actually believe that money is a blessing. Where most people believe money is the root of all what? Mm. And that's not your fault that you think that. That's our social economic media presentations that they portray on us. When you go see a movie, who's always the richest guy? Always. And then the, and then the broke guy is the hero. Man, that's crazy. Even Jesus went broke. How can you travel all over the globe and be broke? You can't go nowhere with no money. You think Jesus went there with no money? Come on, man. So I went on a journey to see what the 8% do, and I wasn't gonna do what the 92% do. And so I went to want to find out what they're thinking, what they're studying, what they're doing. Today, I'm gonna share with you how I went from broke to millionaire. See, that's me when I moved back home when I was broke with my mom and yeah, they just did me. And then that's me balling out right here. I got my first dream car. It was a Cadillac Escalade, 2016, paid cash. I was like, I cried that day. Like, I, I had made it. It wasn't even about the car, it was about hitting the goal. I never forget, I started on this journey where I wanted to learn about junk bonds because that was how you made money like that's where people were getting wealthy i went to the library and i pulled this book off the shelf and like within the first two sentences it said the minimum investment is fifty thousand dollars now i don't know about you that's about equivalent of a hundred thousand dollars today and i was 16 years old and so i just uh, put that book right back on the shelf and so I just randomly walked down the aisle and I saw this other book and I pulled it off the shelf. And then, so I eventually, I put that book up and literally right then and there, I read almost the entire book. It taught me how to do OPM, other people's money. It taught me how to do, do deals with bad credit. It taught me how to get money back at closing. That book changed my life. I still do deals just like this today on big deals, no money down. And now this guy is actually my coach and my partner. After I read that book, I was motivated. I was excited. I was energized. I was ready to go. And then 10 years later, 
I ain't read a book. I ain't buy a book. I ain't look out of house. I didn't do nothing. Anybody, you go to a conference and you get on site and then you don't do nothing. Okay, we're going to change that today. What happened was, went down to Tuskegee. I had this dream of being a promoter. And I did pretty good. I had concerts. I had Outcasts. I had Too Short. I had Goody Mob. I had Altel Mobile, AT&T, Coca-Cola, Miller, uh, Budweiser. They all sponsored me for my event. And it was one of the biggest events down in Tuskegee, Alabama. In Alabama, like literally, stores were selling out. But then I failed and it went broke. I packed my bags and moved back home to Cincinnati with my bag credit that was lower than their golf score. And then I got a job and I was making $26,000 a year and I was still broke. That day I made the decision. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm no longer gonna be broke and dependent on people to pay my bills. I'm gonna buy me a two family like I learned in that book, a two or four family so I can live rent free and adjust these expenses. I nearly went and got three jobs. I was working 70 hours a week, averaging $13 an hour. And my day started at one in the morning and I was driving my car throwing newspapers, AKA I was a grown delivery boy. But then I went to my regular job from eight to five, working as a project manager, electrical construction. After six, I came to a stadium just like this and I sold ice. Oh, yeah. uh, this was my favorite job. I don't know if you could tell. I love that job. And I worked these jobs for nine months, over 70 hours a week. And then I got fired. I got fired from my beer job. I really liked that job. And they let me go but I was okay. I saved up enough money. I paid off my bad credit. I paid off all my bad debt. Then I had enough money for a down payment. And then I went to the classified ads. You anybody, anybody remember the classified ads? I went to the classified ads and I found a two family in there. I said, I gotta get it. So I took that little $3,000 and I said, I'll buy this deal. He said, so, and I bought my first two family. Now, see, they call it house hacking now, but I call it getting a roommate. See, in this top floor right here, I rented the Section 8 for 500. And then right here, I rented it out to my sister and my little niece for 200. My mortgage payment was $700. So I was collecting a total of $700. I was living rent free. I felt like Rick James on the Dave Chappelle show. I'm rich, bitch. But then, just like that, it was like the money valve of cash flow shut off. It, 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 was, it was like my life began to change. Like I made bad decisions. I was over leveraged. I didn't have enough reserves. And then my life began to shut down. And then it was April 2001. Cincinnati race riots broke out. Literally, the city had a curfew. The city shut down. But then five months later, 9-11 happened. and the whole world shut down. And the whole world shut down. I started robbing Peter to pay Paul. Then they foreclosed on my two four families. About a month later, I'm losing my last house that I live in and I end up doing a short sale. And now I'm being evicted out of my own home. I'm scared, I'm frustrated, I'm panicking. And now I'm homeless, I'm couch surfing. And then my mom and dad said, boy, just come on home. So I go home. At this point, I've lost everything. I feel like I'm at the lowest point of my life. I'm broke again. And at that moment again, I made the decision. I said, I'm not gonna let this hold me back. I will make a decision here. And so I decided I wasn't gonna make the same mistakes I did before. I would leverage my mistakes, but not over leverage. Actually, some of my buddies I went to school, we went to Tuskegee and I told them what I was doing. And they said, Mike, I got you. I said, but check this out. Instead of me making all the money, I'm gonna give you all the profits. I'm just gonna charge a couple of fees. And with that, I started making them money. They were making 15,000, 30,000, 40,000. Then they start telling their friends and I started making even more money and life was still good. And then all of a sudden, the great recession came and people were going broke. Can I be honest about something? I didn't even know what a recession was. And then when I find out, I was like, oh, my whole life been a recession. I've been broke all this time. And I was like, I know exactly what to do. I seized the opportunity. See, in Chinese, problem means opportunity. Problem and opportunity is the same word in Chinese. 
So I seized the problem because I already knew what a recession was like and I already knew what to be broke. So then I started helping other people out of bankruptcy. I started helping people out of short sales and I was buying their properties back and letting them live there, but I was buying them back for pennies on the dollars. And then I started selling them for millions of dollars. And then I went from my mom and dad paying my bills to I started paying their bills. See, all this was possible doing big deals. Growth is patience. See, because God's preparing you for it, being a place for when you become that tree so you can be deep-seated, deep-rooted, so when the storms come, you can sway in the storm. And as you begin to grow up into this tree to be fruitful and multiply, you may not have come from a wealthy family, but from this tree, a wealthy family will come from you.